Hi guys, thank you all for sticking around to the last one of the day. I'll try and keep it interesting for you. Um, so my name is Richard Devitt. I'm one of the co-founders of Zimble. We are a EV hourly and daily rental business based out of North Oxfordshire. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, mobility as a service for both personal and business transport. So hopefully this will be uh, edifying for you. Um, I'm a military historian by training. So how I got into cars is a wholly different story. But um, a thousand years ago, uh, <laughs> uh, the height of personal transport for the everyday consumers of the time, peasants, were the two feet they were born with. Um, now, if you worked really hard your entire life, you might just upgrade that to four feet in the form of a donkey. Um, which you would then rent from your lord on finance as well. So there are certain things which don't change no matter how long you go back. Uh, the analogy from a thousand years ago has held right up until now. The only difference is that now, instead of looking at a horse, we look at horsepower. It is, however, fundamentally much the same equation. There's one commodity throughout human history which you can't buy, you can't sell it, you can't manufacture it, but you can waste it all the time. And before you know it, it's run out. And that commodity is time. Time is how we measure everything. We measure how long we live. We measure how long we take to accomplish any form of task. It's measured in time before we measure it in anything else. Now you're asking yourselves, what on earth are you doing talking about time right now? The reason this is because mobility is no exception to this. It's all about time. We measure mobility not on the distance traveled or on the horsepower of the vehicle we're doing it with. We measure it on the time we take to do it. How long does it take us to fly from Heathrow to New York? You know, we measure that in time, not the three and a half thousand miles, not how fast the aeroplane is flying. We measure it with time. How long does it take us to get our kids to school? How long does it, how long does it take us to get to work? We measure that in time. Your morning commute might be the same three and a half miles, but one day it'll be 10 minutes, the other day it'll be two hours. Time is the important factor here. And as Benjamin Franklin once said, time is money. Which brings us on to one critical question. How much time do we use our cars for? It was this question that we asked ourselves when we founded Zimbal. And Zimbal is the answer to trying to make the world a better place with that question. Now, James stole my thunder earlier, but 95% of the time, our cars do nothing but depreciate. They sit there doing nothing. They sit at your house overnight, they sit at your workplace during the day, and all they're doing is depreciating. 5% utilization is the average, and that average is the same world over. Now, the most highly utilized vehicle is usually an aeroplane. The airlines like to say how efficient they are. They only average 42% of the time for an asset that is far more expensive. And that's you know, one of the highest utilization numbers we get. There are nearly one and a half billion cars on this planet right now, and almost all of them are internal combustion engines, and almost all of them sit there for 95% of the time doing nothing. But everyone pays for their car 100% of the time, regardless of how much you use it. This is the truth for individuals, everyday consumers. It's the same for businesses. This number doesn't change materially. Even the most efficient logistical businesses, the ones that do it all day, every day, even those vehicles will rarely hit more than 40, 50% utilization. And that's businesses that will switch the drivers out to keep the vehicles moving where humanly possible. The most expensive asset the vast majority of us will pay money for outside of personal properties and the businesses we run is our vehicles. It is the only asset class that we will accept that we must pay a huge amount of capital up front, we will pay a constant amount of payments in the form of finance, tax, fuel, maintenance, which only gets larger as a vehicle gets older, let's remember, for an asset that we hardly use. And that gets less valuable the longer we continue to pay this amount of money to maintain it. We don't accept this as a society in any other asset class, whether it's property, commodities, stocks and shares, even the collectibles we, all, we like to have. We don't accept this. We accept that if we're going to invest in something, that thing has to gain in value 
at least modestly over time, or at the very least not be worth less than when we paid for it. But we accept this in our vehicles. And this is before we even consider the ongoing ecological disaster that is maintaining such an enormous fleet of fossil fuel powered vehicles on this planet. There is, fundamentally, almost no upside to this scenario, but we live with it, we endure it, and most of us don't even question it. 54% of UK households' carbon emissions come from their personal vehicles. 28% of UK emissions in total come from road transport. It's a truly staggering set of statistics, and we look at it and shrug as a society for the most part. The conclusion you have to look at, we have a hugely expensive method of transport, it's grossly inefficient in terms of how much we utilize it, and it's vastly polluting as a class. So, that's the problem. Probably not news to anyone in this room. What is the answer? Is the answer more electric vehicles? Well, for many of us who've been here today, that is certainly part of the answer. And it's a solution we can get on board with. The car companies certainly want us to get on board with it because it means they will sell more vehicles, much like they have spent the last hundred years selling us vehicles. But it doesn't answer the real problem of the huge high cost to consumers and the fact that we hardly use the things. Just replacing the ICE fleet with EVs doesn't solve this problem. So, what is the answer for both personal and business transport? Well, at Zimbal, we think it's mass, mobility as a service. This is the conclusion we came to, and this is why we founded Zimbal. You know, we have two core principles. The first one is to help people in the form of saving the money as wherever we can, and the second one is to be as sustainable as humanly possible while doing that. Um, we started in our pilot town of Banbury using our business-to-consumer model. We rent cars by the hour, by the day to anyone who needs them. We deliver it to you so that the consumer gets all the convenience of car ownership and none of the costs. So you need a car for an hour, for two hours, for a day, that's what you get and that is all you pay for. We expanded that over the course of time to several different B2B options. So we now operate a long-term rental option for businesses, which because they can reclaim the VAT on it and they can just return the car after a minimum of six months if they're no longer using it or swap it for something else. It's a very cost efficient way for people to switch to an EV straight away without having to go through all the costs and long-term contracts of purchasing. Um, we've also set up our own charging infrastructure. We use a biofuel powered generator to run our own charge points. So this will allow anyone who is already an EV user but wants to recharge in a more ecological fashion while being quick about it, they have that option with us. And the charging infrastructure is pivotal to creating the mass ecosystem. If you want people to convert to EV, you have to make it easy, you have to make it cost effective, and you have to make charging convenient to them as well. So, the concluding thought from this is, 21st century transport is evolving. We've come a long way, but it needs to go faster. We don't have the time as a society to just let this problem hang because we won't live long enough to see the solution through. Or even if everyone in this room might do, our children might not. We need to move faster and we need to do it now. There are both environmental and economic reasons for both individuals and businesses um, there are savings to be made, there are profits to be gained. This doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. This doesn't have to be an enormous subsidy from the mass of society to benefit. We can all benefit from it on both a financial and an environmental level. The technology and products and the services, like symbols, are here, they exist now. You could make an argument that some of them aren't perfect. If we wait for the thing to be perfect, we'll die first. But they work now. All we need to do is have the willpower to step forward into the future that is right in front of us now. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, I know I'm good people, but someone's got to have something. <laughs> so how does it work on just like a day-to-day -day basis? Like if I go to work in the morning, but then I need to drive home in the afternoon, so, uh, great question. So, Zimbal's uh, example of this is we have a custom-made app which you download for free. There's no membership fees, there's no, no registration fees, anything like that. You book your cars ahead of time. You only get charged for them as you use each booking. So, you will know in advance that you are guaranteed a booking on vehicle X, Y, or Z. 
The vehicle is brought to you and collected from you, so the address and time of your choosing, that vehicle will be there. And it's just that simple. And you, it's all the same out. So it's a, it's a keyless system as well. So when you book the vehicle, you don't need to interact with me beyond the first time I bring you a vehicle to explain how it works. It'll just be there. You open it with your phone and off you go. I guess that's it then. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. <laughs>